Okay everybody, here's an example of why I need an antenna tuner. Here's my HF antenna. And you can see it's stuck up in the trees here. Uh, not up very high, because I'm in a rental property. And that's my dipole head where my coax goes in. And it's up about 18 feet. And then a piece of wire goes out about 14 feet to the left. And then another piece of wire goes out about 14 feet to the right. So we'll walk over there. But because this antenna is up in the trees, it impacts the characteristics of it. So, see if I can find it here in the in, in the lens here. And there's the insulator on the end right there, probably up at about 12 feet. And I got that tied off at 550 cord over here. So there's some OD green 550 cord. I run that up the tree, and I use that to hold up the insulator, which is sitting right here. Again, I gotta find it in the viewfinder. There it is. And that goes back out over towards that tree where the duct tape is. And then I don't know if you can see it, I'll try to get it up there. It is the other insulator tucked into the tree. But because this antenna is twisted around in these trees, it impacts the characteristics of the antenna with respect to its operating frequency. So we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you what this antenna looks like without being tuned and then what we can do to fix this antenna so we don't have a high rate of reflected power. So let me cut it off here and we'll head back inside where it's a little bit warmer and there's less snow. Okay guys, we're back inside here and we're going to show how to manually tune an antenna. And I have my radio turned on here on the 20 meter band and right now it's on 14215 and I'm connected to the MFJ 949E Deluxe VersaTuna 2. It's probably one of the more popular antenna tuners out there. You have a cross needle watt meter, uh, an antenna coax switch, and this tuner allows you to have two antennas, coax 1 and coax 2. You have your transmitter capacitor adjustment as part of the T circuit. You have the inductor circuit, or the inductor knob. And then you have the antenna capacitor, and this is all for tuning. So, the first thing we're going to do here is I want to show you what this antenna looks like without any tuning. And this was me using my tape measure to cut that antenna and put it up in the trees. And I did cut it for 14240 megahertz, so I'll put that in there as a reference down here. Um, but you can see with the trees and the coax and the snow, and it all has an impact on actually what the SWR for the antenna is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and transmit without the radio antenna being tuned. And as you can see, I'm putting 50 watts forward, getting around 12 watts reflected and the needles are crossing at 2.5 to 1 VSWR and that's that's higher than what most manufacturers recommend I did set my radio to 50 watts to cut the power back so I wouldn't do any damage to it for this demonstration so here you go 50 watts out 12 pack the SWR is 2.5 to 1 we want to get that down and you know in an emergency communication situation uh, hurricane, tornadoes, ice storms, power outages, uh, any prepper with a ham radio license may not have the luxury to put up a, an antenna perfectly between two perfect telephone poles with no trees around so you can see how a tuner could be useful in your emergency communications plan just like I had the HOA restrictions here I can only put it up in the trees I couldn't get it up very high that could happen during a disaster so let's go ahead and set this antenna up for being tuned. So the first thing I'm going to do is take it out of bypass and I want to run the RF through the tuner. So I'm going to put that to coax 1. And now I'm going through the tuner. The next step is to adjust the inductor. So you need some, R some signal level here because you're going to need some static. So first we're going to get off frequency so we don't interfere with anybody. And then we roll the inductor switch for max noise. 
and this is where your ear comes in. But you'll hear the, the change in noise. You see how the static increases between J to K? So J has the most noise. And then we again adjust the capacitor for max noise. We hear the little peaks in the static. And what we're looking here is to get close. This is kind of a rough tune. And then we're going to go and actually apply some power to this. So we're going to come back over here. There is I'm going to put some power in. I turn my radio to low power. And I'm going to adjust the two capacitors. And you can see how that needle is dropping on the reflected powers. So I'm trying to see if I can get this both in frame. I'll zoom out a little bit. Is watch the needle and watch me turn the knob. You see how that's coming up and down? And what we're doing is making this antenna resident by turning the capacitor on the transmitter side and the antenna side. So now we have good 10 watts of forward power and no reflected power. So now we're going to increase the power and do this all again. So there we go, I'm in the medium mode. And I'll go ahead and adjust those capacitors again. And I'll tweak it over here on the antenna side. And that's at medium power, putting 50 watts down. So I'm going to increase my power to max. And there we go. So I took an antenna that looked like... i roll this over here. That, untuned, because I set that to the untuned position. We'll put this over to the tuner, and now look at it. That's a perfect antenna. So we're doing that on 14272, and that shows you how you can tune an antenna. So what we're going to do is make this a little more challenging. I'm going to change the frequency to 7 megahertz because the antenna wasn't even cut close to that, and show you how you can make a, a bad antenna okay for an emergency operation. Okay, I'm back. I got the radio tuned for 7225, which is the 40 meter amateur radio band. I have the coax switch to the bypass, and I'll show you what the SWR is for this antenna without being tuned at all. And I set my power to low because I don't want to burn up my radio. But as you can see here, I'm putting 10 watts down and getting a full 10 watts back. So that's horrible. You definitely would never want to operate on that. So what we want to do is we're going to try to tune this. So I'll zoom out here a little bit. Roll this over to the tune position. We need a little sound. And we're going to rotate the inductor knob for max noise. Oh, that just got louder. So H seems pretty loud. And rotate the capacitors. Of course, this is a rough tune. You hear how that peaks? So we want to get that to as much noise as we can get. And then we're going to try transmitting a little bit and see if we can't get this thing to tune up. Okay, let's get everything set up here. Sorry, I'm working. I only got two hands, so I'm trying to get everything set up here. So now I'm going to adjust my knobs and see. Yep, there we go. So as I tweak the different capacitors, the transmitter and the antenna capacitor, now I took an antenna that was horrifically bad put the power up the medium and that's not too bad I'll see here I can tweak it make it a little bit better and look at that just by adjusting this capacitor over here so I can zoom out and again give you some reference just by adjusting that capacitor you see how that reflected power is coming and going away so there we go we've tuned that antenna and now that antenna even though it was cut for 14 megahertz and it's not as efficient as it should be, it is safe to operate on 7 megahertz. So I hope this shows uh, why you need an antenna tuner and how this can apply to emergency communications and prepping because you may not have a lot of antenna materials to make lots of different antennas for different frequencies if you can make a, a good solid middle of the road antenna then with a tuner you can make that antenna operate on more than one band and increase your communications capability. So again this is just a recap. It's uh, an MFJ 949E 
Uh, I think this is a 300 watt tuner with two coaxes inputs on the back so you can have more than one antenna. It's a manual tuner and I think they run about 150 bucks but there's many other brands out there. I'm not in doing a product endorsement here. I, I like this but you know do your own research and buy what meets your needs but this gives you an idea how an antenna tuner works and how you can make a bad antenna look good to the radio and protect your valuable communications equipment. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper.